Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tony Castrilla, and I'm the Director of Public Affairs for Fairfax County. And it is my honor and privilege to join all of you here in the Government Center and all of those watching virtually to the 2023 Fairfax County inauguration. And I'll tell you what, if there's any indication of our future with the energy and excitement and buzz in this room here tonight, things are looking up. Uh, we're all excited about what's next, and this audience demonstrates that vibrancy. Before we get started with the official ceremony, I'd like to do two quick things. First of all, we have numerous former and current elected officials with us tonight. Too many to be named, but we all know their names. So what we'd like to do is ask all of the former and current board members and former and current elected officials to stand and be recognized. Thank you, thank you. Second, in public affairs, we know all big events need a hashtag, right? So everyone's taking pictures and videos. So tonight we're asking you to use the hashtag on your socials, FFX inauguration. That's FFX inauguration. So when you start posting, use it. Now listen, this is the third time I've had a chance to be part of this event. And I look at this incredible audience of county staff, leaders, members of our community and family and friends. And what a great picture that happens every four years. So I'm gonna get us started and take our picture. You ready? Here we go. Say FFX inauguration. Got it. Uh, secondly, hang on to those programs. On the back is a QR code. Starting tomorrow, the county will post all of our official photos and videos there. That's something new we're trying and a reason to hang on uh, to the program. Tonight, our elected leaders, many returning, some are new, will take their oath of office. The inauguration is a historic event, the culmination of the democratic process and a proud moment for Fairfax County. Congratulations to all of you here on stage. And also, a very special congratulations to all of your family and friends here with us tonight. We know these are your foundation, supporting you on this journey. A big round of applause for all of them. As we begin our ceremony this evening, please join me as we stand for a moment of silence for personal reflection. You may stand. And then remain standing for the presentation of the colors by the Fairfax County Joint Public Safety Honor Guard, followed by the singing of the national anthem by retired Fairfax County Fire Department Camp Captain Francis Mensa. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at 
at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land and of the free and the home of the Thank you, always so powerful, especially in this room. You may be seated. <clears throat> Tonight, the individuals you have elected to guide the future of Fairfax County will take the oath of office to serve you for the next four years. I have the honor of introducing these individuals. First, I would like to introduce Jeffrey C. McKay, our chairman of the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. He is a lifelong Fairfax County resident, born and raised on the historic Route 1 corridor in the Franconia District. From kindergarten through eighth grade, he attended two of Fairfax County's world-class public schools, Woodlawn Elementary School and Walt Whitman Middle School before graduating from Bishop Ireton High School. Chairman McKay graduated with a BS in Public Administration and Political Science from James Madison University and is a graduate of the University of Virginia's Sorensen Institute for Political Leadership. Chairman McKay has more than 20 years of experience working on behalf of the residents in Fairfax County, first serving for 12 years as then Supervisor Dana Kaufman's Chief of Staff before running and winning the election as the Franconia District Supervisor in November of 2007. He was first elected chairman in 2019. Since joining the board, Chairman McKay has been a champion for equity, education, affordable housing, public safety, transportation, revitalization, and the environment in Fairfax County. His commitment to these issues has been demonstrated on the board as former chair of the Legislative and Transportation Committees and current chair of the Budget Committee. Chairman McKay is also a regional leader. Currently, he is the chair of the Dulles Corridor Advisory Committee and serves on both the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority and the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments. He was twice the chair of the Northern Virginia Regional Transportation Commission, a member of the Northern Virginia Regional Board of Directors for the Virginia Association of Counties, where he is a past president. His work has been recognized by the Mount Vernon Springfield Chamber of Commerce as the Citizen of the Year in 2019, by the Faith Alliance for Climate Solutions as the recipient of the 2020 Sustainability Champion Legacy Award, and by the Fairfax County Park Authority Board as the recipient of the 2021 Chairman's Choice Award. 
Chairman McKay lives in Franconia District with his wife, two children, and their latest retired racing greyhound, Pascal. Chairman Jeffrey McKay. Walter L. Alcorn. Hunter Mill District Supervisor is honored to begin his second term. He has lived in the Hunter Mill District for over 30 years, first in the town of Vienna and since 1996 in Reston, where his wife Christina had raised a family, son Ryan, and daughter Delia. Supervisor Elkhorn is the son of two educators and was born in Richmond. He grew up mostly in Tennessee and Missouri before attending the University of Virginia. Supervisor Elkhorn is honored to represent the Hunter Mill District, which includes Reston, Vienna, parts of Tysons, and the greater Herndon area. Highlights of his first term include a comprehensive community-driven update of the Reston Comprehensive Plan, an increase in new and preserved affordable housing in Hunter Mill, and several important improvements in bicycle and pedestrian safety across Reston, Vienna, and the Herndon areas. Supervisor Walter Elkhorn. James N. Jimmy Bierman, Jr. <laughs> Our incoming Drainsville District Supervisor was born and raised in McLean, Virginia. His love for the Drainsville community started at an early age when he was first learning to swim at Spring Hill Rec and checking out books at the Dolly Madison Library. After earning degrees at Williams College and Stanford Law School, Supervisor-elect Bierman knew he wanted to return to McLean to raise his own family and ensure they are afforded the same opportunities that he was. He has been an active community leader and has done work to shape policy at the local, state, and national levels. After working on health care reform advocacy at Families USA, clerking for a federal judge, and a career as a litigator in private practice, he joined the federal government as an attorney advisor at the Department of Homeland Security during the Biden-Harris administration. Before joining the government, his pro bono work included representing advocacy organizations and direct service providers, individuals with disabilities, undocumented immigrants, and indigent defendants. Supervisor-elect Bierman also served as an associate trustee of the Washington Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights and Urban Affairs. In addition to this work, he spent three and a half years on the Fairfax County Police Civilian Review Panel, providing oversight of the police department and strengthening the relationship between law enforcement and the community it serves. From March 2021 through February 22, he chaired the panel, focusing on increasing transparency and accountability and promoting a safer community. Supervisor-elect Bierman, his wife, and their two children, one was born yesterday, This was just updated tonight. Uh, live in McLean. Supervisor elect Jimmy Bierman. <laughs> Pat Harity, Springfield District Supervisor. He has over 40 years of active business, sports, and civic community leadership and experience. As a lifelong Fairfax County resident, he graduated from West Springfield High School and earned a bachelor's degree in accounting from Virginia Tech. He has held senior management positions, including chief financial officer and chief operating officer in several local government contracting and technology companies. Supervisor Harity has been recognized by the Northern Virginia Technology Council, the Fairfax County Chamber of Commerce, and others for his leadership in business, sports, and community organizations. First as a business and community leader, and now as a supervisor, he has actively led efforts to implement common sense solutions to Fairfax County's most pressing problems, including reducing the tax burden, addressing increasing crime, focusing on education resources on teachers and into classrooms, relieving traffic congestion, and improving safety. Also included is enhancing our parks, addressing the opioid public health crisis, gang violence, and human trafficking in Fairfax County. Supervisor Harity is a balancing common sense voice on the Board of Supervisors. He sure serves as chair of the board's Older Adults Committee and the Sports Tourism Task Force. He also serves on the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority. He has been named the best public service servant by the Gazette newspaper, best of the best for the last seven years. 
He's the only supervisor to receive the President's Award from the Fairfax County Federation of Teachers for his work supporting our teachers. Supervisor Pat Harrity. <clears throat> Andres F. Jimenez, Mason District Supervisor. He was born in Bogota, Colombia and raised in West Virginia. He moved to the Mason District 12 years ago with his wife, Shauna, and they have since raised two daughters and numerous adopted pets in Mason. Supervisor-elect Jimenez looks forward to serving his community as the first immigrant and Latino Mason District Board Supervisor. He has a long history of public service. He has a long history of public service, including years as a Democratic staffer on Capitol Hill with federal affairs for the city of New York and in leadership across a number of environmental nonprofits, including Citizens Climate Lobby and the Oceans Conservatory. Supervisor Lick Jimenez is currently the executive director of Green 2.0, where he works to elevate communities both underrepresented and disproportionately impacted by climate change and environmental catastrophes. He's on the board of the Colmore Clinic in Falls Church and served as the at-large Fairfax County Planning Commissioner from 2020 to September 2023. A strategic clinker, thinker and relationship builder, he looks forward to continuing to serve his community as the next Mason District Board Supervisor. He is joined tonight by his wife and daughters Emma and Nora and sister Anne Marie Tan to celebrate this momentous occasion. Supervisor-elect Andres Jimenez. Rodney L. Lusk. <laughs> Franconia District Supervisor was sworn in as Fairfax County's Franconia District Supervisor in January of 2020 and is the first African American male elected to the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. He currently serves as Chairman of the Public Safety Committee, Vice Chairman of the Personnel Committee, Member of the Adult Committee, Audit Committee and a member of the successful Children and Youth Policy Team and second Vice Chair for the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments. Prior to being elected as the Franconia District Supervisor, he served 30 years as, the Fairfax County, as a Fairfax County employee, which included roles delivering human services along the historic Richmond Highway Corridor, serving on the staff of two former members of the Board of Supervisors, and as a National Marketing Director for the Fairfax County Economic Development Authority. Additionally, Supervisor Lusk served as a member of the Fairfax County Planning Commission and the Fairfax County Park Authority. Supervisor Lusk's priorities while in office have included opening a workforce development center on Route 1, police reform, improving manufactured housing communities, initiating the revitalization of Springfield, addressing the county's affordable housing crisis, enhancing our pedestrian and bicycle safety network, and implementing a bus rapid tra transit project on Richmond Highway. During the pandemic, his office coordinated with the Fairfax County government agencies and local nonprofits to distribute over 3 million pounds of food, the largest food distribution to date in Fairfax County. Supervisor Lusk is a native Virginian, a Franconia District resident for over 24 years and a graduate of the University of Virginia. He and his wife Jacqueline are proud parents to their two daughters, Addison and Sheridan, Supervisor Rodney Lusk. Dalia A. Palchik, Providence District Supervisor. She was born in Argentina and moved to Fairfax County with her family at age six. She is a proud graduate of Fairfax County Public Schools, including Mantua Elementary School, Frost Middle School, and Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. She earned her Bachelor of Arts in Anthropology and French from Tufts University and a post-laureate pre-medical certificate from Johns Hopkins University. Supervisor Polchek has years of experience working on behalf of Providence District residents. In 2020, she began her first term as a Providence District Supervisor and was the first Latina to serve on the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. As the Health and Human Services Committee Chair, she helped facilitate COVID-19 outreach efforts and ensured successful equity vaccine clinics throughout the county. She's been a strong advocate for affordable housing, 
multimodal transportation, accessible childcare, early childhood programming, and mental health services, all while striving for equity in all aspects of our community. Before that, she served as the Provident District Rest Representative on the Fairfax County School Board. She also worked as a world language teacher, a medical interpreter, and as a microfinance and communications specialist. Currently, she serves as the chair of the Council to End Domestic Violence and chair of the Northern Virginia Transportation Committee. As a member of the Senate State Executive Council for Child's Children's Services, Supervisor Dalia Palchik. Kathy L. Smith, Sully District Supervisor. She began her service as the Sully District Supervisor in January 2016. Prior to being on the Board of Supervisors, Supervisor Smith represented the Sully District on the Fairfax County School Board for 14 years. While on the school board, she was chairman three times. Supervisor Smith has devoted her career to ensuring that the Sully District and Fairfax County remain a great place to live, work, and raise a family. Since her election to the Board of Supervisors, she has prioritized constituent services such as affordable housing and pedestrian safety. She has served as the chair of the Board of Supervisors Land Use Policy Committee since 2016 and is vice chair of the Transportation Committee. She is the chair of the Education Committee for the Virginia Association of Counties and is on the board of the Northern Virginia Regional Council. Supervisor Smith and her husband, Steve, moved to Fairfax County in 1984. They have four children and six grandchildren. Supervisor Smith spent many years active in her children's youth sports leagues and served as PTA president at three schools attended by her children, Chantilly High School, Rocky Run Middle School, and Popular Tree Elementary School. Supervisor Smith taught for seven years, teaching first grade in New Jersey and second grade at an international school in Saudi Arabia. She graduated from Muhlenberg College with a BA in Sociology and Elementary Education. Supervisor Kathy Smith. <laughs> Daniel G. Stork, Mount Vernon District Supervisor. He began his first term on the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors on January 1, 2016, and is now starting his third term. During his first two terms, Supervisor Stork has led the Fairfax Green Initiatives, Embark and Revitalization of Richmond Highway, Strategic Economic Development Task Force, the Tourism Task Force, renovation, renovation of original Mount Vernon High School, approval of the new Lorton Community Center Library Park, and the South County Police and Animal Shelter, along with the Lorton Library renovations. He chairs the board's Environmental Committee, Audit Committee, Vice Chairs the Economic Initiatives Committee, and served on the Joint Board, School Board, Environmental Task Force, the JET. The Alexandria District of Columbia, Fort Belvoir, and Prince William Interjurisdictional Committees and the Council of Governments, Chesapeake Bay and Water Resources Policy Committee. The Virginia Association of County Board of Directors, VACO Energy Subcommittee, and chaired the VACO Finance Committee. Previously, he served on the Fairfax County School Board from January 2004 through December 2015, including three terms as school board chairman and co-chair of two joint school county board committees. In his professional life, Supervisor Stork has developed and owned several health care and benefits firms. He holds an MBA in management and a BS in finance from Miami University of Ohio and is a former board president of Good Shepherd Housing, West Potomac High School PTSA, and Riverside Gardens Recreation Association, as well as a former Head Start Administrator and Youth Basketball Coach. Supervisor Stork is deeply grateful for his wife of more than 40 years, Deb, and his children, Ben, Katie, and John, for their support. Supervisor Dan Stork. <laughs> James R. Walkinshaw, Braddock District Supervisor. He has served as the Braddock District Supervisor on the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors since 2020. As chairman of the board's legislative committee, he has led the county's efforts in Richmond to secure additional funding for education and gain new local authorities to protect our environment and implement common sense gun safety measures. He helped lead the board's work to pass a collective bargaining ordinance for county employees, 
reduce the proliferation of plastic bags in our streams and natural areas, and provide tax relief for the spouses of service members who died in the line of duty. As chair of the Virginia Railway Express Operations Board, he has spearheaded the effort to implement the system's first ever Saturday service. He also served as chair of the Fairfax County's Council to End Domestic Violence, where he worked to expand the county's life-saving lethality ass assessment program, and as a vice chair of the Transportation Planning Board, where he worked to align our region's transportation plans with efforts to address climate change. Prior to joining the board, Supervisor Walkinshaw served as Chief of Staff to Congressman Jerry Conley. He's a former Vice President of the Ravensworth Farm Civic Association, a mentor to at-risk youth through Fairfax County's Befriend a Child program, and a lifelong volunteer with the Friends of Lake Akatink Park. Supervisor Walkinshaw is a graduate of New York University. He and his wife, Yvette, live in Truro neighborhood of Annandale with their son, Mateo. Supervisor James Walkinshaw. Steve T. Descano is the elect of the Commonwealth's attorney. A West Point graduate and served as a U.S. Army aviation officer before putting himself through law school and becoming a federal prosecutor. He served in the Obama, Obama administration's Justice Department for six years, specializing in the prosecution of complex financial crimes. In 2015, he served as the Fairfax NAACP's first representative to the county's police civilian review panel. Since taking office in 2020, he has undertaken a reform agenda aimed at mitigating racial and socioeconomic disparities and countering mass incarceration in the Fairfax County justice system. Under his leadership, the Office of Commonwealth's Attorney has decreased the use of pretrial pre detention, launched multiple diversion programs, and built a comprehensive data infrastructure, all while keeping Fairfax County the safest community of its size. Commonwealth's Attorney, Steve Descano. <clears throat> Christopher J. Falcon. He is the clerk of court elect who unfortunately cannot be with us tonight because of mandatory clerk training in Richmond. He has previously served as legal counsel, deputy clerk, and civil diversion supervisor for the Arlington Circuit Court's clerk's office. Before taking office, he was a practicing attorney for 15 years and was the founder and owner of the Falcon firm PLLC. He earned his undergraduate degree in management from James Madison University and his JD from the Wilder Commonwealth Law School. He will be the first Latino clerk of court in Fairfax County and in Virginia history. In 2016, he was the recipient of the Arlington County Manager's Excellence Award for his contributions to the jury orientation video. He currently serves as the Vice Rector of the James Madison University Board of Visitors. He previously served on the Fairfax County Human Services Council, the Arlington County ASAP Policy Board, and the Virginia Latino Advisory Board under both Governors Terry McAuliffe and Ralph Northam. He has also coached youth sports as an F SYA and FPYC boys basketball coach, and he lives with his wife Jackie, an FCPS educator, and their three children in Annandale. <laughs> Stacy A. Kincaid. Sheriff for the Fairfax County and the, for the city of Fairfax was not new to the Fairfax County Sheriff's Office when she was first elected in 2013. Now in her 36th year, she started as a deputy sheriff right of out of college and worked her way up to the rank of captain. She ran for sheriff because she wanted to be an agent of change. As sheriff, she has enhanced staff diversity to better reflect the people of her agency with over 40% of her staff as persons of color. One of her top priorities has been to change the way our criminal justice and behavioral health systems interact, resulting in better outcomes for individuals and the community. She helped spearhead Diversion First, the county's collaborative initiative that offers alternatives to incarceration for people with mental illness, developmental disabilities, and co-occurring substance use disorders who come into contact with the criminal justice system for low-level offenders. 
For individuals not eligible for jail diversion, she created Striving to Achieve Recovery, the STAR program, an intense peer-based program for individuals with substance use disorders that seeks to remove stigmas while providing hope and resources for sustained recovery. She also created Medi Meditation for Addictive Treatment, MAT program for incarcerated individuals with opioid use disorder. STAR and MAT are voluntary programs designed to treat, not punish, addiction and were recognized this year for their innovative and success by the National Association of Counties. By identifying and treating addiction as a chronic health issue, Sheriff Kincaid is helping to make our community healthier and safer for everyone. Sheriff Stacy Kincaid. Dana Barakat. will serve as the first Arab-American Arab woman to hold office of the director of the NVSWCD. Born and raised in Fairfax County and a product of Fairfax County Public Schools, she is a strong believer in the interdependence of our environment and our community's well-being. She is fluent in Arabic, Spanish, and English, and is eager to bring her years of community and coalition building and add a new perspective to the board. She's always been a strong advocate for human rights and empowering women in marginalized communities to have a seat at the table. She holds a BA in Government and International Relations from George Mason University and an MA in Arab Contemporary Studies from Georgetown University. Director, Director Dana Barakat. Rhonda J. Bitterly. Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District Director-elect grew up in the desert southwest and developed an interest in the environment at an early age. She attended the University of Arizona and graduated with an MS degree in Soil and Water Science. Her professional experience includes working in domestic international agriculture, working with the Congressional Office of Technology Assessment on Environmental Studies, and working with consulting firms on revising the EPA's model for assessing hazardous waste and developing guidance for operators of fuel storage tanks. For a number of years, she also edited numerous studies performed by the National Research Council's Water Science and Technology Board. She moved to Northern Virginia to pursue her interest in working for Congress with a desire to run for office at some point. She decided this was the year to run for the Soil and Water Board, and she's eager to get started with this important work in January. Director elected, elected Rhonda Bitterly. Christopher E. Kerner. Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conser Conservation Director has degrees in chemistry, biology, civil engineering, and hydrology, and an MBA. He is an environmental scientist and professional engineer with over 40 years of experience investing in cleaning up to toxic waste sites around the world. His primary areas of expertise have been in environmental sustainability and managing difficult ground and surface water contamination challenges. He has also led high-profile expert panels at Hanford Nuclear Reservation, the anthrax re remediation at the U.S. Capitol, and value engineering at Fort Detrick Biohazard Treatment Facility. Director Kerner, who is currently director of the Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District, a diplomat in the American Academy of Environmental Engineers, a Fairfax Master Naturalist, past chair of the local Great Falls Group of the Sierra Club, and past recipient of the County Environmental Excellence and the Friends of Trees Award. Director Christopher Kerner. Okay, how are we doing? <laughs> now, I also have the privilege this evening to introduce the Honor Roll Penny Escarati. Fairfax County Circuit Judge who will administer the oaths of office to the elected officials. <laughs> judge Escarati is the Chief Judge of Fairfax County Circuit Court, the first woman to hold this position, and as a judge she implements the Fairfax County Drug Court in 2018 and the Veterans Treatment Docket in 2015, which assists combat veterans with mental health and or substance abuse issues. 
the first such standalone docket in Virginia. She has served as a judge for the past 15 years, both on the circuit court and general district court level. She is the chair of both the Supreme Court of Virginia's Veterans Specialty Docket Council and the Judicial Administration Committee. In addition, she serves as a mentor judge and a facilitator judge for the Office of the Executive Secretary. In 2017, she was chosen by Virginia Lawyers Weekly as a leader in law and in 2022 as an influential woman in law. She received a degree in criminal justice from Old Dominion University where she attended on a military scholarship. Upon graduating, she was commissioned in the United States Marine Corps and served in Saudi Arabia during Operation Desert Storm. She earned her JD degree from George Mason, Mason School of Law and upon completion of law school, she was a prosecutor and a criminal defense attorney and civil litigator in Fairfax County. She was honorably discharged from the United States Marine Corps Reserves as a major. And with that, I would like to call Judge Oscarotti up to the podium. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, thank you Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, it's truly an honor tonight to be here to minister the oath of office to the individuals on this stage. Uh, in December 2019, the last time I gave these oaths, not only was my hair longer and my eyes were stronger, uh, but we were unaware that the world was about to change and we were challenged beyond our imaginations. I can attest that all the elected officials and the judiciary worked hard during that time to keep the doors open, which we did, and developed new ways to get the job done from Zoom court proceedings to Zoom board meetings, to plexiglass to masks, Fairfax County remained open and accessible during the darkest of times. Now, as we look to the future, I'm very fortunate to be chief judge and be able to, to collaborate efforts with the board to create more opportunities for equal access to justice for everyone in Fairfax, regardless of zip code and regardless of language spoken. One Fairfax is not just a concept, but a priority for every public servant in county government to include the judges. The citizens of Fairfax are very fortunate to have all branches of the government working together for the entire community we serve. Now I do want to direct a few short remarks to the people seated behind me. Now one of the books I read this year was Sweetness of Water by Nathan Harris. Now in that book, a character visualizes decisions as a tree. And as I said in my state of the judiciary, that is how I see being chief judge, just as everyone behind me should be, see being a public servant. I inherited a tree we inherited a tree. It was here long before we got here, and it will be here long after we're gone. But right now, it is our tree. And our decisions can make it stronger, and our decisions can make it weaker. You see, public service is not a profession. It is a promise, a promise to hold the citizens' needs above your own gains. It is a position we temporarily hold, bestowed upon us by people who have faith and belief in our abilities to govern soundly and with an eye towards the future. By taking this oath tonight, you are taking on the responsibility to be the keeper of the tree and to work every day to make sure it stays healthy and growing. Oaths are not just words to be said and celebrated. They represent a commitment and a challenge for every person on this stage. So whether this is your first oath or your 10th oath, remember you have the honor to hold your position in this county and the public has placed you here to lead them, serve them with honor, humility, and humanity. So ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all your public servants in Fairfax County, I want to thank you for your trust and confidence, and I hope all of us live up to your expectations and that we will be, we will be mindful keepers of the tree. Thank you. All right, so now let's get to why we came here tonight. Okay. All right, if I could have Jeffrey McKay come forward. All right, are you ready? Yep. All right, raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I, Jeffrey C. McKay. I, Jeffrey C. McKay. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. As chairman of the Board of Supervisors. As chairman of the Board of Supervisors. Of Fairfax County, Virginia. Of Fairfax County, Virginia. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Sir. If I could have uh, Walter Alcorn. 
Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? I am. Okay. Just repeat after me. I, Walter L. Alcorn. I, Walter L. Alcorn. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. As supervisor of the Hunter Mill District. As supervisor of the Hunter Mill District. Of the Board of Supervisors of Fairfax County. Of the Board of Supervisors of Fairfax County. Virginia. Virginia. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. James Beerman Jr. All right, you ready, sir? All right, raise your right hand. Just repeat after me, okay? All right. I, James N. Beerman Jr. I, James N. Beerman Jr., do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. As supervisor of the Drainsville District. As supervisor of the Drainsville District. Of the Board of Supervisors. Of the Board of Supervisors. Of Fairfax County, Virginia. Of Fairfax County, Virginia. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Pat Narity. All right, you ready? Yep. All right, raise your right hand, sir. Repeat after me. I, Patrick S. Herity. I, Patrick S. Herity. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. As supervisor of the Springfield District. As supervisor of the Springfield District. Of the Board of Supervisors. Of the Board of Supervisors. Of Fairfax County, Virginia. Of Fairfax County, Virginia. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Sir. Thank you. Andres right. Simonis. I'm ready. All right, raise your right hand. All right, repeat after me. I, Andres F. Jimenez. I, Andres F. Jimenez. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. Discharge all the duties in incumbent, upon incumbent upon me. me. As supervisor of the Mason District. As the supervisor of the Mason District. Of the Board of Supervisors. Of the Board of Supervisors. Of Fairfax County, Virginia. Of Fairfax County, Virginia. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Right, you ready, Supervisor Lusk? Yes, ma'am, I am. Right, raise your right hand, sir, and repeat after me. I, Rodney L. Lusk. I, Rodney L. Lusk. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And I will faithfully and impartially discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. As supervisor of the Franconia District. As supervisor of the Franconia District. Of the Board of Supervisors. Of the Board of Supervisors. Of Fairfax County, Virginia. Of my favorite place, Fairfax County, Virginia. <laughs> I wasn't in there. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you, Madam. All right, if you could raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Dahlia A. Palchik. I, Dahlia A. Palchik. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. As supervisor of the Providence District. As supervisor of the Providence District. Of the Board of Supervisors. Of the Board of Supervisors. Of Fairfax County, Virginia. Of Fairfax County, Virginia. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, Supervisor Smith. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Let's repeat after. 
after me. I, Kathy L. Smith. I, Kathy L. Smith. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. As supervisor of the Sully District. As supervisor of the Sully District. Of the Board of Supervisors. Of the Board of Supervisors. Of Fairfax County, Virginia. Of Fairfax County. Virginia according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability so help me God so help me God congratulations Thank you. you ready sir I'm ready all right raise your right hand I Daniel G Stork I Daniel G Stork do solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. As supervisor of the Mount Vernon District. As supervisor of the Mount Vernon District. Of the Board of Supervisors. Of the Board of Supervisors. Of Fairfax County, Virginia. Fairfax County, Virginia. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. James Walkinshaw. You're fast. Okay, you ready? All right. I, James R. Walkinshaw. I, James R. Walkinshaw. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. As supervisor of the Braddock District. As supervisor of the Braddock District. Of the Board of Supervisors. Of the Board of Supervisors. Of Fairfax County, Virginia. Of Fairfax County, Virginia. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. All right, raise your right hand, sir. All right. I, Steve T. T. Descano. I, Steve T. Descano. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. As Commonwealth's Attorney of Fairfax County. Of, as Commonwealth's Attorney of Fairfax County. And Fairfax City, Virginia. And Fairfax City, Virginia. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you very much. Whenever you're ready. Yes, ma'am. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Repeat after me. I, Stacy Ann Kincaid. I, Stacy Ann Kincaid, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia, and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia, and that I will faithfully and impartially, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge all the duties incumbent upon me, discharge all the duties incumbent upon me as Sheriff of Fairfax County, as Sheriff of Fairfax County, and Fairfax City, Virginia, and Fairfax City, Virginia, according to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Dan Barricade. All right. You ready, ma'am? All right. Just raise your right hand and just repeat after me, okay? All right. I, Dana H. Barricat. So I. And Dana H. Barakat, do solemnly, do affirm solemnly affirm that I will support the Constitution. That I will of the United support States. the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me as a director of the Northern Virginia okay. Soil and Water Conservation as Conservation District. As the director District. of the Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District, according, according to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> All right, you ready, ma'am? 
Yes. All right, just raise your right hand and repeat after me, okay? I, Rhonda J. Bitterly. I, Rhonda J. Bitterly. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that I will faithfully and impartially and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge all the duties incumbent upon me discharge all the duties incumbent upon me as a director of the Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District as a director of the Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability so help me God so help me God congratulations <laughs> Repeat after me. I, Christopher E. Kerner. I, Christopher E. Kerner. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. Discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. As director of the Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District. As director of the Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Good job. Thank you very much. Congratulations to all. I now have the honor and would like to invite Jeffrey McKay, Chairman of the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors, for a few words. Thank you very much, Tony, and good evening, everyone. It is uh, amazing that all of you came out here uh, to tonight's uh, special event, and I want to begin by thanking a lot of folks uh, who deserve thanks. Uh, first, Congressman Connolly, uh, for those of you who come to this every four years know he's normally here uh, and comes and delivers remarks, and he called and yielded me all 30 minutes uh, of his comments, so that's good news. Uh, but in all seriousness, I do want to uh, thank a lot of folks. First, uh, our team at the Office of Public Affairs who put on tonight's program. Let's give them a round of applause. Uh, as was stated earlier, and I'm not sure everyone heard this, so I want to repeat it. I want to thank the amazing Hayfield Secondary Orchestra who performed for us today. Hayfield. Hayfield is both my boundary school and Supervisor Lust boundary school, and in Hayfield, we like to say Hayfield uh, birds fly, but Hayfield hawks soar. And those kids tonight soared, so let's give them a round of applause. I would also like to thank uh, my family, my wife, uh, Crystal, my daughter Leanne, my son Aiden, who are here uh, with me today, as well as uh, my mom and dad, lifelong Fairfax County residents who are here uh, with us and all played a role in getting me here today, and I couldn't be more appreciative uh, for their support. I want to congratulate all of my colleagues uh, on the stage on their elections, and I want to thank their families as well. Being an elected official can be the greatest honor. But we also must recognize the toll that it can take on our families. In the case of me and my colleagues on the board, we know to do the jobs we do and do them well requires full-time, 24-7, 365 day a year dedication. It means nights away, weekends away, and in many cases, overcoming life in an aquarium where family outings can routinely be interrupted in the name of public service. Most definitely, it can mean at times the art of ignoring social media. I want to thank County Executive Brian Hill for his leadership during the most challenging of times, which I will talk more about in a minute. I also want to especially congratulate my longtime friends and colleagues, Supervisor Penny Gross and Supervisor John Faust, who are retiring. And Supervisor Gross would be here tonight, but she told me earlier today sternly that she had county business tonight serving on the ANOVA Board of Directors, and so she would be here otherwise. Thank you both for your generosity and counsel during my first term as chairman, 
We would not be here without your service, and your combined 44 years of service and experience will be missed by me and this Board of Supervisors. I'm proud to be standing here once again to serve as your chair. I'm here because of the passion and love that I have for this community. I spent my whole life in this county, born on the historic Route 1 corridor, and now a resident of the Hayfield community. While we all took different paths to get here, all with unique experiences and different backgrounds, each of us on this stage today shares the same desire to serve. I'm honored to have this group of colleagues who share that passion with me. The past four years have been both incredible and challenging for our county. We were able to accomplish so much despite all the challenges that we faced. The pain caused by COVID-19 was significant. Our ability to navigate through the challenges brought on by the pandemic is a true testament of our community's strength and resilience. All of our efforts to build resiliency and strong partnerships in the county over many decades prepared us well for the challenges the pandemic brought in more ways than I could have ever imagined. Our commitment to equity through our One Fairfax policy was instrumental in our response and put us far ahead of every single jurisdiction in Virginia in virtually every single measure. A policy that made looking at equity as a forethought, not an afterthought. Because of the emphasis, we successfully coordinated the largest regional vaccination operation in the Commonwealth of Virginia, right here in Fairfax County, and we touched every community. We administered over two million vaccine doses, had a vaccine uh, rate of over 80% in every single zip code in Fairfax County and distributed over $92 million in funding assistance to cover food, rent, and utilities to help our community. In short, we indeed saved lives. We indeed saved lives in every corner of this county. We also launched a business and nonprofit recovery program in 2020 that targeted our businesses hardest hit by the impacts of COVID-19, like childcare facilities and our hospitality industry. Through multiple loan and grant programs, we swiftly awarded over $84 million of mostly federal funds to businesses across Fairfax County. I want to thank all of our nonprofit and community partners who helped us through the pandemic, and most importantly, all the healthcare workers who put their life on the line for our community for their incredible, incredible bravery. And of course, our recovery would not have been possible without the thousands of hardworking Fairfax County employees, our county family. I want to thank all of you. As Judge Ascarati mentioned a moment ago with regard to the courts, we did not close Fairfax County government down, not even for one day or one minute during the pandemic because we knew this community needed us more than ever. And we could not have done that without our county family of employees. These were not easy days. I will never forget spending months in this most empty building, hearing echoes in the hallways, lights out, knowing our workforce was away from this building in their home safely or out in the community serving the people of this county. The strength of a community, as I often say, is best seen in crisis, and we showed our strength and resolve in amazing ways. But we didn't just recover from the pandemic, we made our county better than even before. We know we are the economic engine of the Commonwealth of Virginia here in Fairfax County, and we continue to attract new businesses, and this year we celebrated having more people working and more businesses operating in Fairfax County than ever before. This is a welcome news, particularly when our employers who are in our county are currently looking to fill over 110,000 jobs in the region, more than half of those in Fairfax County. But more can be done and will be done in the coming months to ensure more people are skilled and ready to fill those jobs. The foundation of these kinds of economic successes is a safe community. And I'm proud to say that the Major City Chiefs Association once again named Fairfax County the safest jurisdiction of our size in the United States of America.
We are literal proof that reforming and improving policing and always being a leader in best practices is indeed necessary to build a safe community for all of our people. In the past year alone, we've seen two police academy classes break county records, yes in size, but most importantly in diversity. It is important that we have a department that looks like our community. Like every single community, we've had challenges with recruitment and retention. Filling those roles with high quality recruits has been one of our board's top priorities and our plan is paying dividends. Thanks to our investments in public safety departments and stellar departmental leadership, including Stacey Kincaid, we have been effective in bringing in qualified individuals to protect and serve our community throughout all of our public safety agencies. We've made major improvements to our transportation network. We celebrated the grand opening of Metro Silver Line to Dulles in November of 2022. This was an achievement that was decades in the making, and Chairman Hanley is about to jump out of her chair in excitement. <laughs> Chairman Bulova, uh, thank you for all of your leadership in making sure we made it to make sure that we could open the Silver Line to Dulles. I also want to point out that transportation improvements are happening throughout Fairfax County, and transit is improving significant benefits, is proving that significant benefits in other parts of the county make a big difference. Richmond Highway will soon become the one, the first bus rapid transit system in Fairfax County and over a $1 billion investment in the Route 1 corridor. The one is a game changer, an investment that will positively change this corridor and will be a major step in fully integrating transit through every corner of the county and building up the Route 1 corridor. Increasing access to public transit has also benefited our county's climate change efforts by helping to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. In 2021, we made a commitment as a county to be carbon neutral in energy use by 2040. Since then, we have made significant changes and have implemented many policies and initiatives to achieve that goal. Just this past year, we unveiled our first all-electric trash truck, installed solar panels, and made major energy saving upgrades to countless county owned facilities and unveiled fully electric Fairfax County buses in the county. To be clear, addressing climate change is a moral imperative to be sure that future generations can enjoy a clean, healthy environment. Those are just a few, a few of the many things we are doing as a county to achieve carbon neutrality. In 2019, we boldly made it our goal to build 5,000 affordable housing units by 2034. Because of our unprecedented success, we then doubled that goal to 10,000 units, and I'm proud to say Fairfax County now has over 4,000 new affordable units, either built or in the pipeline, than we had just four years ago. We are well on our way. It's important to note these units are not just concentrated in one place or on one corridor in the county, but they are indeed being built everywhere in Fairfax County. We made a commitment year after year to prioritize having the best education system in the country, partnering with our colleagues on the school board and supporting the hard work of our Fairfax County public schools. We know that FCPS is a huge economic driver of our success and we see education as a board as an investment, an investment in our young people and indeed an investment in our economy. Most importantly, our reputation as a fiscally sound county remains intact with triple triple A bond ratings through all the headwinds we faced during the pandemic. This is critical to every single thing we do in the county. Sound fiscal management is not just a term of art, it is what we do in Fairfax County and we are long known for that and will continue to make sure that that guides every decision we make in the next four years. Moving forward, I intend to use this momentum to continue to expand on all of our successes. I'm committed to making the next four years the most productive and successful possible and ensuring Fairfax County is always the beacon of success in Virginia and a nationwide leader in best practice, 
best government management, and of course, the best place to live. Finally, to my colleagues, the voters have chosen us. The campaigns are over, and it's time for us to govern together. Faith has been placed in us to put the community and our county first, to do our work not for short-term partisan political gain, but for the advancement of our county and our people. Protecting our Fairfax County brand of excellence is an everyday responsibility for the chair, and one I proudly take great responsibility for. Board success requires collaboration, trust, and mutual respect. We are a governing board, not a legislature, and there is a huge difference. Our residents, whether they voted for us or not, deserve a board that works towards this common goal. I will close by repeating the simple two-word motto of my high school. This guides my life. Advance always. Thank you again for the trust you place in me and this board. Thank you, Honorable Az Karate, the best judge possible for us to swear in. We love you. And I am excited to work with all of you, all of you who make Fairfax County not just the best place to live, a beacon of hope and an economic model, but proudly the most diverse, inclusive and engaged community in the world. I look, future to what, I look forward to what the future brings. I wish all of you a safe and happy holiday season. And to my colleagues, get ready. After January 1, we go back to work for the people of Fairfax County. Thank you very much. Chairman McKay, thank you so much for those inspiring words. Our brand is excellence, and it's been an excellent night. It wouldn't have been possible without the hard work of so many who helped pull this together. I uh, want to thank Meeting Space Management and Channel 16, Facilities Management, the Clerk's Office, our partners in public safety, and the excellent staff in the Office of Public Affairs. I want to thank all of you for being with us here on stage tonight, and of course, all of you joining us. We appreciate your time, and thank you for being here. We are all looking forward to an exciting and successful 2024. As we conclude, please enjoy one final performance by Mike Rowe from the Fairfax County Police Department. Thank you, and have a wonderful night.